God, because we're close to him. But we don't mean that uh, that we are literal sons of God. This is taken well, out I of... I think in the case of Jesus, there was an immaculate conception that God put a baby in Mary's stomach. So there has to be some way that he is the son of God. And not in the just someone who's close to God and who loves God. It has to be in like a son kind of way. But do you not think that orchestration could um, be explained that God is showing his infinite power? I'll give an example. Look at Adam, for example. Adam, he had no mother and he had no father, right? Do you not think that's, that's something quite immaculate? Yeah. Right? Isn't it so? Don't you think, uh, Christian, uh, you don't, don't mention of Adam and Eve? No, we do. We and, uh, believe, we, we old believe old that is our uh, mother and father. Can you believe that? Yeah, wait, that, see, I believe what? Adam and Eve, that's that's the mother and father, that's that, that's the main seed of all of us existence. Yeah. They were the so, but then you don't say it, be, it was the beginning and the end of Jesus, that's why I get lost. Yeah. Wait, what am I saying? That it's the uh, beginning you, and end of Jesus? Not you, it's Christianity, okay. the belief. That, that it began and ends with Jesus? Right. It, it, for example, okay, okay. For, so you look at Adam, for example. Adam. He didn't have a father, right? He didn't have a biological, metaphysical father, okay. right? And he didn't have a human mother, right? Do you accept that? Yeah. So okay. Right. Do you not think that 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 demonstrates the artistry and the, the the power of God? Do you do you accept that? Yes. Okay. So now it's an amazing because God in the Quran he actually mentions this, right? He actually points this out to, to the Christians. He says, if you look at the conception of Adam, and we look at the conception, uh, the, um, the conception of Adam and Jesus, God says in the Quran, "Be and it is." So God issues a command. Like God is so powerful, all He has to do is issue a command in Arabic. We, we, in, in the Quran, it says, "Kun fayakun." In Arabic, that means "be and it is." So God, all He has to say is just He issues a command, and that actually comes into existence. Are, are you following? Yeah. Right? So that's the power of God. God is so powerful that all he has to do is issue a command and it happens. Right? So, so when we talk about Jesus, we look at him as a, as a prophet, we respect him, and we also believe that Jesus was sent to the Jewish nation. Right? Do you, do, do, you, do you accept that? That he was sent to the Jewish people? Yeah. yeah. Okay, the Bible supports that. In Matthew 15, verse 24, Jesus said, I was not sent except unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So again, Jesus said, I was only sent to the Jewish people. Right? Also, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not go in unto the way of the Gentiles. So he told his disciples, Don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go there. Only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. However, we believe as Muslims that we believe in a final prophethood, right? We believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last final prophet of God, right? Because the reason why I believe this is as follows, right? Jesus said in a book of uh, John, chapter 5, he says, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truths. He says, he will guide you into all truths, right? When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. Right, so I want to ask a logical question and I would like to engage in your thinking, yeah? If I said to you, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now, does that sound like an incomplete message or a complete message? I want you to think carefully. You, I want you to reason with me. I have me many things to say to, say to you. you. Do you mean bear as in understand them now? Right. For, okay. For example, if I said to you, what's your name? Roxanne. Roxanne. If I said, Roxanne, I have many things to say to you, but you will not be able to bear them now. However, when my friend Daniel comes, he will explain to you everything. Okay. Does that show to, does that not, logically speaking, does that not say to you, that you have many things to say, I have many things to say, but I cannot say it now, but my friend will tell you everything else. Is it, is it logical? Does it follow? That could follow because I could not have the understanding that I would have when Daniel comes or, with, or when whatever friend that you said comes. I could not have the knowledge or the experience yet that I have when he comes. Okay. So 
yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, man. <laughs> every day you're learning, every day you're growing, every day you cannot think the same way. Like today, I cannot think the same way as I think tomorrow. And if we had this conversation in a week from now, and I had different experiences to then, I would take what you're saying differently, if that right. makes sense. Okay, so this Daniel person, right, um, obviously he would, he would come to you and he will say additional things that I have not said to you, right? Because for some reason at this point, I can't really explain what I need to say to you. But when Daniel comes, he will explain everything. So the, the New Testament, I, I, would, I would argue the same argument because Jesus said, I have many things to say to you, but at this point, I cannot tell you. However, when the spirit of truth comes, now I believe that spirit of truth is Prophet Muhammad. Right, and the reason why I believe that is because the Greek word um, used here is parakletos. Parakletos. Para parakletos. Parakletos in Greek it means a comforter or someone who is going to give a message. Right. So we believe that Prophet Muhammad is that comforter, right? And he will guide mankind into all truths. Right? We know that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, right? And if we look at the Quran, for example, the Quran, we, I think the Quran is amazing, personally. I think the Quran is amazing. Because the Quran is the Old Testament, right? No, no. The Old Testament uh, consists. Isn't there. Um, the Old Testament is somehow incorporated into. No, the Old Testament, if we look at the Old Testament... Okay. You're talking about Adam and Eve, so you have to understand, have some type of Old Testament in your... Sorry, come again? Because you guys are talking about Adam and Eve, so you guys have to have some type of the Old Testament in your religion, right? No, no, no. Right. If we look at the Old Testament, it consists of the book of Genesis, it yeah. uh, consists of the book of Leviticus, yeah. the book of Numbers, the book of Joshua, the book of Samuel. We don't have these books in the Quran. It doesn't exist. We have, the Quran is an entirely separate book in itself. Yes, there are some stories that resemble some of the Old Testament stories. Do you understand? Yeah, so some of the stories are similar, like uh, some of the creation stories, um, speaking about, for example, the flood, what happened at the time of Noah. So there are similarities, although there are major differences. Right, okay, continue. Do you understand? Yeah. Right. So, so that's one of the major key differences, you know. However, in the Quran, it does focus. Oh gosh. Yeah. yeah. So in the Quran, the Quran does focus on the worship and the oneness of God, right? That is kind of like the pinnacle of the Quran. The heart of the Quran is it speaks about the oneness of God. In the, there's one verse in the Quran. Um, I'll say that in Arabic and I'll translate it. It says, Inna Allah la yukfiru. Allah does not forgive. And yushriku bi, that you associate partners with me. Wa yukfiru duna dhalika ma yasha. And that Allah will not forgive any other sin other than, so any other sin that you commit, God will forgive. But if you associate partners with God, God will not forgive this sin. Because God is the one that gave you life. So are you saying that your God wouldn't forgive me for, think, for praying to Jesus and for thinking that Jesus is part of God? Is that what you're saying? What it is, right? God in the Old Testament says, I am a jealous God. Yeah. Right? Have you read this verse? I think so. Right. God says, it, right. God is jealous, right? He's so jealous that if you start worshiping someone other than him, According to his own words, he gets upset. But he also said, this is my son for who I am well pleased with. So I don't see how it would be bad to... See, the thing is, when in the, when in the New Testament, yes, it does say that. It says, this is my son I'm well pleased with. Yeah, you're right. And we, if God is pleased with him, we should be pleased with him. Yeah. But we shouldn't worship him. We should respect him. Do you know what, okay, let's get into definitions. Do you know what worship means? What does worship mean? Because I, I, I want to try and clarify in your worship mind. Worship to me means like you, they're kind of a role model to you and that you, yeah, just that they're a role model. I think 
that's my main definition. Okay, so I think, okay, I, I'm glad I asked you that question. Right, so the definition of worship is to pay, to pray to them, to uh, prostrate to them, to uh, to basically treat that that individual or person like a god. And this is what God in the Old Testament says that he gets jealous of. So when we worship God, we worship him in a way that only he wants to be worshipped. Are you, are you, do you follow? I do follow. I just, I've read the New Testament and I'm just, I don't see anywhere where it doesn't say to not worship Jesus in that sense. That will shut it. So is there a verse in the New Testament where it says that you should worship Jesus? I don't, not that I can recall, but I haven't read it in probably in the last year, so I don't know. Okay. Right, there are several verses in the Bible where God says that you should only worship Him. And, but is okay. that in the Old Testament? No, in the New Testament. I shall show you. Just bear with me one second. Interesting. So is your whole like spiel right now telling me that I shouldn't worship Jesus? Is that what you're still saying? Is no. that what this whole like... Conclusion. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, basically, I'm saying, with all respect, that worshiping Christ is considered as an abomination because Jesus never once commanded to worship him, right? He did say, worship the Father. For example, in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Forgive us our trespasses. Did you not say this? I think so. Yeah. So, I didn't memorize it, but no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm just paraphrasing myself. So, in these verses, it says that we should only pray to God. So, Jesus said, Our Father. So, He directs you as a Christian. If you have a supplication or a prayer to make, you should direct it to him. Are you with me? Yeah. Right? So, and Jesus is a teacher. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a prophet and he's a moral teacher. So he's, as a Christian, he's guiding you. He's guiding you, says, you know what? If you have a prayer that you need to make, do it to him. Because, exactly. Do it to the person, not the what? Do it to the boss, not the PA. Yeah, like, in other words, God is the boss, yeah. and the PA is the one subordinate to him, which is slightly underneath, right? And Jesus, Jesus says that he is, God is greater than him. John 14, verse 28, Jesus said, my father is greater than I. So, again, we should only render worship to God, you know? I have a lot to think about now. So yeah, absolutely. Read, read, and, but this is a reassess. Educate and keep reading. I'm learning every single day. It's just a bit of to do it, isn't it? If you're working all the time. But it's great. It's too good. You've got to say it. Yeah. What's your name? Amanda. This is Hamza. What's your name? Hamza. Hamza. Nice to meet you. And, um, yeah. And if you, yeah, just, uh, my advice to you is this, right? Um, I don't know how open-minded you are about Islam because Islam is a religion that's been like really misunderstood especially like by the media and there's basically people who don't like Islam and um, so I, I advise you just to I don't know in your own spare time just sit down open a book and just read anything about Islam and just obviously be a bit more open-minded unfortunately we have some people who don't like Islam and they're unfortunately very close-minded I mean I'm very open-minded I read about Christianity you know um, obviously this is the reason why I can actually have this discourse with you because I've done my, I've done some research I'm not I'm not the I'm not I'm not a scholar in any way you know so I don't claim to be up there or anything like that but whatever little knowledge that I have I'm just passing it on to you really to be honest you know so I invite you to obviously be a bit open-minded and just have a look into it you don't have to uh, there's no compulsion no one's compelling you to be a Muslim you know what I mean as an open-minded person just have a read and then you know see exactly 
Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you. I'll definitely get more educated. Oh, I've never heard that. You don't seem like you don't actually have no education. You have it. He's just talking to the right people at yeah. the right time. It's just getting a different perspective. I've never heard that point of view of it could be wrong to worship Jesus as you worship God. I never heard that point of view before because I've only ever been around Christians who really believe in Jesus and that love him. So I'll definitely research that more. That's yeah. a very interesting point that you brought up. Yeah. I like that point. Yeah, no worries, man. Yeah? Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Take care.